Um, when I ate this, it was different though because it had little bits of cheese in it, and I've never had this brand before, the, this kind. And when I had it, everything, like I said, was fine. I didn't have any problems. But then within about a few hours, not that long, within a few hours, I started breaking out in these half-dollar hives. These things were huge, and they were all over my body to the point where I was just scratching. And I, like I said, I was very naive. I didn't know what this was. I didn't know what hives were. No one in our family broke out in hives like this. So it was very different for me. It was, it was, I was in, I, I was so lost of what was going on. But I had this habit of trying to talk, talk the seriousness down. I didn't want to be the damsel in distress, I guess you could say. And I just remember my grandma, I was on the phone with my grandma because she had come by because um, we were walking, I can't remember what we were doing, but we were, me and my boyfriend were walking at the time, and my grandma drove by because she just lived down the street, and she had stopped and seen us, and she stopped and she saw my face, she goes, what's wrong with you, are you alright? Long story short, when she left, she told me, go ahead and wash your body off with soap and water, try that, are you sure you're not having an allergic reaction? I said, I don't really know, um, she said, are you hot? I said, yeah, I am really hot, it's getting hot. She says, take a shower, wash your body off, see if that helps. If it doesn't, call me back. I did an hour later, and it was getting worse, and my throat started bothering me. And I called her, and then she, long story short, because it was a very long few hours of this. And I had, and I want to add this in here because this was pretty profound. There happened to be a guy that showed up out of the blue who turned out to be a relative that we didn't know was a relative of ours and he was a doctor I don't I don't know what else to say except this if it wasn't for this guy showing up at that time at my grandma's house and for him to talk to me on the phone after she left to tell me to call the ambulance I don't think I'd be here today I still I still really feel like he was my angel in a lot of ways because if it wasn't for him I would have died right in that house. I know I would have. And so I listened to him and I, I called the ambulance and this was like the lousiest ambulance call probably ever because I called the ambulance, the, the 911, and I said, hi, I think I need an ambulance. And they said, what's the matter? And I said, um, my grandma, I swear to God, that's what I said. And I said, um, my grandma tells me that I need to call an ambulance, but I don't really think I need to. And they said, well, what's wrong? And I said, um, I'm having these hives, and they're all over my body, and I don't know what to do. And my throat's starting to bother me, and it's literally all over my body. So they showed up. And when they showed up, they they opened the door and they showed up really fast because they were literally down my house. So they were like there. And when they showed up and they opened the door, my boyfriend let them in. I was sitting on the couch in the living room and I was nervous. I was I'm having nerves right now. I admit I'm I'm a little PTSD talking about it um, because I remember it very vividly now. A lot of the memories of this this experience I remember. The NDE itself was what I blacked out of. And uh, when the ENT showed up, they had this oh shit face. Sorry, I gotta say it, but they literally paused and they went, whoa. And they were just in shock. And I knew right then and there, okay, that's serious. So when they came in, they, they, there was like five, six guys. And they're all helping me, you know, one's in front of me, he's pumping me with... Uh, Benadryl and everything and they were asking me questions trying to keep me cool and calm and then sure enough I said I don't understand what's going on they said Melinda what you're having is an allergic reaction what did you eat today did you eat something you haven't eaten before I said yeah I had this hot dog I've never had before and it was beef but I'm I have no problem with beef they said well we'll figure that out later right now we know your body is rejecting it whatever it is and as I was talking with them, I started hyperventilating and I went, I'm having a hard time breathing. <laughs> I'm having a hard time even sharing this because it's, 
it's it was very scary and uh, I don't like going back to it but I I know that this will help you to understand what happened in the moments to my near-death experience and what happened was in this next moment was the EMT in front of me he said well you could be feeling like you're having a heart attack and I said yeah he says panic attacks can feel like a heart attack so he gave me this brown paper bag and said for me to blow into the bag and my boyfriend can recount for all of this he's not my boyfriend anymore many years ago but he could even because he was a witness he saw the whole thing and uh, when I was trying to blow in the bag it didn't work of course and I just I just stopped and said it's not working and they said alright is this are you just talk to us breathe out loud slowly tell us about school or whatever and I said uh, I don't want to talk about school and uh, I just remember within a matter of seconds and this was really fast and I remember within a matter of seconds the EMT and I, I, I said I just do I remember the exact conversations or anything like that leading up to this moment no but I remember the sec the next thing I remember is I just <sighs> I can't breathe and I literally I panicked because what happened was it wasn't a panic attack my my hives and if people don't know this hives can go internally inside the body not just the outside of your body depending on the severity and I have a very severe allergic reaction out to beef and this severity happened and it was so profound that it closed up my throat which is called um, anaphylactic shock and when that does I was suffocating and I said I can't breathe I literally in that moment I literally felt like all of a sudden I was a fish out of water I felt like I was like on the moon or something with no oxygen it it was that it was like that and when um, I said that the next thing I remember is I just passed out and I laid down on the on the couch on my left side I remember that and I was like twitching like because I could I was suffocating and I couldn't even respond I couldn't speak I was it was like I was paralyzed because I was not getting any oxygen to the brain I was not getting any oxygen in my in my lungs and when that happened I remember I passed out and I it was like I fell asleep I didn't see anything yet but then the EMT shot an EpiPen in my leg and I woke up and I was just like whoa it, because it's a steroid or whatever and uh, the second I woke up they immediately rushed me in the ambulance and I'll never forget the face of my boyfriend he was terrified and I'm shaking really bad because it's a scary moment talking about that because it was it was really really scary and um I just remember I was in the ambulance and as the ambulance the EMTs were talking to me there was two EMTs one on my right one on my left oh, for you it's the opposite <clears throat> and I was listening to them and they were do like adding more and more Benadryl in my system and what happened was I'm in the ambulance and that's when this light appeared in um, now for you because of the vision but anyway what I saw was in the corner very slowly little bits of light emanating out and it was very it was like it was like like growing out of nothing is what I can describe it manifested like it was blooming out of nothing and it was very slowly twinkling and emerging and I remember I saw this light and I went what is that and I was so drugged I thought it was the drugs the Benadryl and the steroid and I told the EMT I said um what is that you know I I, I can because they're trying to talk to me and ask me questions and I said yeah but what's that light right there it's really bright it's kinda hard to focus but I'm trying to pay attention to what you're saying but what is that light And the EMT 
that with the light next to him, he said, there's no light here, hon. He was putting his hands up. He goes, no, there's nothing here. And both the EMTs looked at each other, and they, they had that oh shit face again. They went, oh crap, that's not good. And I said, and they said, well, it could be a hallucination because of the medication. And I said, um, okay. And I was trying to dumb it down, you know, just, I was trying to ignore it, but it kept getting bigger. And I started, I started feeling so calm. And I started feeling as if all the fear was disappearing faster than I thought it would, or at all. And I remember I said out loud, and I was mumbling, I said, no, I, I see this white light. I said, are you serious? And I said, there, there really is a white light when we die. And when I said that, I could see in my peripheral vision, because I was so entranced by this light, I couldn't look away. It was bright at first because I was still physically sensitive, but when I saw it, suddenly, all of a sudden, I, I was entranced. And I remember I saw the EMTs look at each other and they had that face of, like, what? This is weird. And I'm shaking because it's so personal, your moment with God. It's incredibly personal. And this next bit is very personal in a way because um, of what we talked about. When I was in this light and I saw it, it just slowly like disappeared everything and all I could see was this light and it got so big that I couldn't focus on anything else around me do I really remember like if anyone was even there if I was still there I believe I was still in my body at that time but consciously on a different level from the physical which is very similar for people in comas and they wake up and they have an NDE as well it's very similar and so I remember all these different colored lights just blossoming and birthing out of this massive source of energy. And there were sounds and it was it was like a hymn in a way. And I could hear a voice and he said, and I say he out of habit, because so many people refer to God as a him, but God is both male and female energy frequency, and people ask, what voice did you hear when you heard God? And what I have discovered is that God's voice can be many kinds, and what it is, is what voice you imagine God to sound like. What voice that would be pleasant for you to hear would be his voice. I'm feeling him now. It's very hard to talk about without being very emotional because it's something that so many people wish to experience and to witness. And it's such an honor to share it. It was like all of the love that I was trying to find in myself was finally here. I was trying so hard for so many years when I was a little girl. I pray to God every day. 
tried to go to church, but I never felt God in church. I just haven't. There's nothing wrong with church, but I never felt Him presently in that way. And I learn it's because God is not in a physical place. God is here. You can't find God. You find God in here. And when I was um, listening to this voice, he said, Hello, Melinda. And I said, Who are you? And he said, I'm the one you call Father. Because I did all the time. And, um, and I said, um, are you really God? And he said, that's what many call me, but I have many names. And I said, why are you here? He said, I've always loved you. And he said that there was nothing you could do that would cause me to not love you. And I said, I was actually just crying in that moment, in fact, and um, I said, I don't know, it's just really hard, it's just really hard. And then suddenly he said, why do I feel like, or he said, what is, what else is wrong, Melinda? That's what he said, and I said, I said, I just don't feel like I deserve heaven, I don't feel like I deserve that. I said, because at the time, I had this little bird named Sweetie, and I've had her for like, she's a parakeet, blue little cute parakeet, and I had her for years, I had her for like 10 years, she was like my best buddy, but she was a little shit because she kept biting me all the time, and we had her, we got her um, from like this big warehouse place that had collected wild birds or something, which was really weird. And I didn't know, but she was wild somehow, I guess, and um, because they bred them. And uh, she had died a few months prior before my near-death experience. And I always felt so much guilt because I thought maybe I didn't love her enough because when she died in my hands, that was, it was one of the hardest things for me in that time, in that moment. And I thought it was because I didn't do enough for her or because maybe I didn't help her enough and I wasn't very nice to her in some cases and so I hated myself for that and then he didn't say anything and then out of the out of the materialization of where I was suddenly from out of the light was was my bird sweetie out of the blue like she just flew out and somehow I I could see her with me and she was there she was so real and I remember she wasn't like your average parakeet she was different she was more vibrant more colorful her eyes had rainbows in them it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen on a bird it was the coolest thing and she spoke to me. She even said, she actually spoke to me and I went, wait a minute, are you talking right now? And, and I said, oh my god, sweetie, oh my god. And she, it was the craziest thing because I remember it like it was yesterday. She spoke to me like an angelic, oh my god, her voice was so sweet, so beautiful. And I remember talking with her and I told her, I told her, how, how are you talking right now? And she said, that's what's so great about heaven. And she didn't just talk out loud at first, because then she would stop talking and then she would talk in my head telepathically. And I went, wait, I can hear you. She said, that's how we communicate in heaven. And I remember hearing her, and she said, so sweet, she, I, I, she said, Melinda, why are you being so hard on yourself? 
And I said, because of the things that I did, I, I just, I don't know. And she said, and when you hear from a bird, it's like seeing something from freaking Narnia. It was the most amazing thing. And it was so sweet because it was like, she was so wise. And she said, she said, Melinda, everyone deserves this. Even you. She said, why, why can't you, why can't you accept that? And I said, because of all the things that I've gone through. She says, Melinda, those are things that happen to you, but that doesn't make it you. I said, but why, why do I still feel like this? And I said, well, what about all the terrible things that I did with you? You know, that, um, and what I did was like, oh, I'd be angry because she'd bite me and I'd throw her on the floor. Not maliciously, like I'd drop her because my hand. And I'd be so upset. I was still so young. I was so young. And I was going through a lot of emotional problems. I've grown up a lot now, but before it was very dysfunctional in my mind. And she said, she said, Melinda, there's nothing to forgive because you didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't your fault. And hearing that from like this adorable little bird, so sweet, so so amazing. But I remember she said, I'll always love you. I've never I've never thought anything bad of you ever. And she said, I forgave you. Why can't you forgive yourself? And it was so sweet because then she said which just broke me down when I remembered this and she said, Melinda, will you ever forgive me for biting you all those times? Because when she bit me, it was hard. Like, she left bruises and took a chunk out of my skin. It hurt really bad. When you hear a little bird ask you something like that, like, it's hard to not feel like I'm completely insane sometimes because what I saw was like something out of this world. It was so incredible. And I remember they, they showed me, she says, you want to see where I live? And then all of a sudden there was like this garden manifested like in the distance. I could see it like in a window of time or whatever. And I could see and I saw all these trees and this beautiful house. Like not the house but like her little, <laughs> like it was her home is what I mean. And I remember how she showed me all of these trees and this beautiful place and it was so clean it was spectacular and I remember she said that's where I live now I'm okay I'm not in pain anymore and I'm so happy I'm more happy than I ever could be and she says Melinda please know I always love you and I'll always be there and what people don't understand about the, the, the process of when we die and when we go to heaven and what I meant by how we're all part of God. And you won't really understand this um, unless you really have had some kind of deep enlightenment or that you have had this experience yourself in some way, in some shape or form. Is that when we go to the other side, we're not separate anymore. We are all joined together in one, and so we all speak the same language, which is love. Which is an energy frequency that is the same as the rest. There's no higher or lower. It's not about status. It's not about judgment. It's not about right or wrong. It's about understanding everybody. And meeting them on their level of understanding and helping them grow. And... That's one of the other reasons why a lot of NDEers have so many different experiences because it's based on their conscious decision. They're, they're on how they feel inside of themselves. And I still believe and 
know inside of my heart that what I experienced was not only real and profound, but a fact. This is the first half of the entrance to my NDE experience. There is a lot more because, like I said, I spent hours in spirit. Don't ask me why, don't ask me how, because I don't know. I just know that that's how long it was. It took a long time. And to answer, it was my choice to stay or to come back, but primarily I was supposed to die that day. 